When I think about everything that goes into running my small but growing influencer business, there are honestly a couple of apps and tools that I simply cannot live without. When you primarily work as a team of one, it's crucial to outsource in whatever ways you can to keep everything running smoothly. So today I'm going to walk you through the 10 best tools slash apps that are essential to my influencer business. And I'm going to share my favorite things about them and how they can help streamline your content creation process. If you're new here, I'm a fashion and beauty micro influencer based in New York City, and I use this channel to help you create great content, grow your digital brand, and earn sustainable income from content creation. So if any of that interests you, please consider subscribing. After 10 years as a content creator, it's safe to say I've tried pretty much every app out there, and I have finally now found the key set of tools in my arsenal that are so essential to running my business, I simply cannot imagine life without them. To make sure this video is as accessible to as many creators as possible, I've tried my best to select apps that at least have free trials, if not free versions of them, so you can test them out for yourself even if you're a new content creator. However, I believe that as you grow your creator business, there are some things worth investing in, so I'll be sure to point out which ones of these tools I believe are worth making the upgrade to paid. And I also broke these 10 tools down into three categories, content planning, content creation, and content distribution. So let's jump right in with the tools that will help you with your content planning. First up on the list is Notion, and I use both the desktop and the app version of Notion. This has essentially become my creator backend database. It's almost like a little peek inside of my brain just in digital form. If you were to ask me what I do in Notion, I feel like the better question to ask would be what don't I do in Notion? I do everything in Notion from setting my yearly, monthly, and quarterly goals. I keep a wedding planning spreadsheet in there. I keep my brand contacts in there. I keep so many things organized within Notion, even down to my daily to-do lists. And I am relatively new to Notion. I kind of really started using it last summer. I actually had one day where I was on the brink of overwhelm and just saying, I have too many different things going on, everything is in a different place, and I just felt like I really needed a central hub. So I actually spent one day last summer, I went to a co-working space, I got myself the fancy coffee, and I sat down and said, I'm going to get my life in order today. So I moved all of these random Google Sheets, notes scribbled in notepads, Google Calendar things, and really tried to sync them all into Notion to create this backend, and I haven't looked back since. One of my other favorite things to do in Notion is to really use it as a project management system. So anytime I have a new project coming up, such as launching a digital course or doing a short sprint where I posted three shorts a day in the month of April of this year, to be able to have a little hub for that and keep track of every step of the way, where I'm at, see what still needs to be done and see what is coming up on my task list has just improved my productivity by so much. I'm still doing a bit of trial and error to figure out exactly my best key Notion systems. I have shared a sneak peek Notion tour inside my Patreon if you're really interested, but Notion also has so many great free tools and templates for creators, and I've been using the free version for almost a year and haven't found a need to upgrade yet. Let's move on and talk about two SEO tools when it comes to your content planning. And if you're starting to think, oh, I don't really do SEO, I don't really, you know, I'm not that big on writing blog posts and things like that. Just understand that SEO can be applied to every social media platform. And one of the best ways to ensure that you're spending time creating content that people are actually going to see is by validating the keywords and seeing what people are currently searching for. So you can take keyword tools and use them even on platforms like TikTok and Instagram. And it's a really helpful way to start generating content ideas. So the first tool that I wanna talk about is Keywords Everywhere. Now, this is a paid tool but it is extremely affordable. You pay a one-time $10 payment and you get 100,000 search credits. So I can tell you, especially if you remember to toggle the Google extension on and off, it will take you a really long time to get through all of that. So I think it's $10 well spent. I use Keywords Everywhere on desktop and I primarily use it for blog posts and YouTube video ideas, but I will also sometimes use it when brainstorming content for Instagram and TikTok. What Keywords Everywhere will essentially do is highlight the monthly 
search volume of a certain keyword or key phrase. So if you're thinking about creating a video about the best skincare products or the best skincare products for dry skin, you can start to see how many people are actually searching for that keyword each month and try to find a keyword that you think you have a realistic chance of getting noticed on. I do believe that if you are a smaller content creator, looking for keywords somewhere between 10 and 1,000 monthly searches is a great place to begin because that might mean that while fewer people are searching for them, they might be slightly less competitive and you might have a better chance to stand out versus more competitive keywords. Maybe like skincare is gonna be a super competitive keyword, but if you can start to narrow it down and figure out a keyword that you want to create content about and that people are searching for, that really tends to be the sweet spot. And then another SEO tool that I think you'll love is TubeBuddy. Now, as the name may suggest, Tube, you may see that this is a YouTube specific keyword search tool, but I do really think it's worth it if you do have a YouTube channel because what's cool about TubeBuddy is it will actually give you a score of a keyword and it will also show you related searches for a keyword that people might be searching for that you could potentially make videos about. So if you do a search on YouTube and you're trying to narrow down a keyword, TubeBuddy will give you a sense of whether or not you have a good chance of ranking for that keyword and it will also give you those related searches that might inspire you to create a video on a slightly different topic or continue to refine that keyword until you find one that really works for you. And again, I do think aiming for a monthly search volume of between 10 and 1,000 searches is great if you are a smaller YouTuber, maybe under 20,000 subscribers. So you can start from there and as your channel grows, you can go after more competitive keywords because at that point you'll be building subscribers and building authority with YouTube. TubeBuddy also just launched a really interesting beta feature called Suggested Shorts where they will go in and identify a 15 second portion of your video that had increased retention and suggest that you crop that into a YouTube short. According to a recent TechCrunch article, YouTube has been getting billions and billions of views on shorts every single day. So that could be a huge opportunity for you to jump in and get new viewers on your content. Let's move more into the content creation category. And the fourth tool that I wanna to talk to you about today is Canva. I have to say Canva more melodically and almost like an angel because I just think Canva is like the best thing since sliced bread. And I'm gonna start out my Canva portion by saying, get Canva Pro, like you literally won't regret it. I can absolutely promise you that. I use pro features of Canva every single day and it elevates my content so, so much. I actually have a 30 day free trial of Canva Pro linked down below in the description box. So be sure to go take advantage of that, test around all the pro features and make sure that you're gonna get good use out of them. I'm almost positive that you will. And just use it as an opportunity to start experimenting and get those 30 days free. The bottom line of why I feel like Canva Pro is worth it is because I currently use Canva every single day in my influencer business. I think that if you create content across multiple platforms, Canva is amazing because you can even take designs from a 9x16 Instagram story format and transfer them to a 16x9 vertical video. It's just so easy to do everything in there and everything transfers really nicely. If you like a design that you've made, you can instantly duplicate it and and use it as a template for something else. I actually am able to have a digital product component to my business where I sell editable Canva templates with Canva Pro because I am able to use a link to share a document as a template, meaning that when someone opens my digital product, they'll get a link to that Canva design and they'll have the option to select use as template and get their own copy of something that I've made. So this has opened up a whole new stream of revenue for me in my influencer business and for every month that I am paying for Canva Pro, I'm making money back from my digital products and it honestly ends up canceling itself out. I make affiliate collages on Canva. I make blog post graphics. I make so many things on there. I will leave a link down below to a video about 10 ways I use Canva in my influencer business because the possibilities are honestly limitless, but hopefully that'll give you some other ideas of how to take 
advantage of Canva, especially if you feel like you've been testing it but haven't really used it to its full potential yet. You can even edit video on Canva now, and Canva just launched Magic Write, which is its AI writing feature tool, where within Canva Docs you can say, give me five reasons why YouTube is the best platform for content creators. It will use its little AI to spit out some components, and obviously from there you can use that to create five different reels about why YouTube is the best platform for creators, or you can use those five and add five more of your own ideas and build out a whole script for a YouTube video. Like when it comes to just brainstorming and idea generation, it's nice to have that as a jumping off point. Obviously, I don't know a ton about the world of AI yet, and I'm sure that it will continue to come up in conversations over time in the creator community. But this is a great way to just start test driving it, see how it goes, and maybe potentially find a way to incorporate it into your content creation workflow. Okay, let's move on to the fifth tool that I want to tell you about, which is CapCut. Now, CapCut has become my go-to short-form video content editor. I use the mobile app of CapCut, but there is actually also a desktop version. So if you've been looking for a free alternative to iMovie, definitely check out CapCut Desktop because I really feel like it's going to be a game changer for creators. Now, in a video I did about creator tools a while back, I talked about InShot, which is another great short-form video editing app. I think the main reason that CapCut has edged out InShot for me lately is because of its auto captioning feature. This just makes my life so, so much easier, especially given the fact that I am creating short form content across so many platforms, across TikTok, Pinterest, YouTube Shorts, Instagram Reels, like the list really just goes on and on. And so to have the captions appear in the video and then be able to share that video in multiple places has been huge. And it is much more accurate and much more visually appealing than lots of other captioning apps that I've tried before. And trust me, I think I might have tried them all at this point. Another interesting thing about CapCut is they are owned by ByteDance, which is the parent company of TikTok. That's causing a whole situation here in the States as you may be following along with that. So one thing to keep in mind is if for some reason TikTok gets banned or there is an issue with ByteDance in the States, you do always have InShot as a fallback platform to use. But one thing that's interesting about CapCut being owned by ByteDance is the editing features in CapCut look pretty TikTok-y. So if you like the TikTok editing features in app, you will definitely like CapCut. The next tool that has become pretty essential in my influencer business over especially the last year or two is called Loom. Now, Loom is this really cool tool where you can record your screen and also record a little floating head style video of you talking at the same time. So if you create any educational YouTube content, educational videos specifically for a Patreon audience, or if you create digital courses, Loom is kind of your all-in-one screen recording software and I just love that it enables you to capture yourself and the screen at the same time. Like I said, I used Loom to record all of the different videos inside of my course, the Influencer Income Accelerator. I also used it to create Patreon videos. I've used it here on YouTube before. And one other interesting way that you can use Loom if you work with contractors is to basically show them how to do something. And this is really helpful, especially if you have any remote contractors where you can share your screen and walk someone through a process like writing an outline for your blog if you want to send that to a virtual assistant. And the beauty of doing this is it's better than a Zoom meeting because that person can go back and watch your recording as many times as they want. They can even react with emojis and leave comments on your video. And it is just such a more practical way of doing things because has anyone ever showed you how to do something and you're like, yeah, totally, I understand. And then you go to do it on your own and you're like, oh shoot, I totally forgot this crucial step and now I need to go back and ask the person who just explained it to me. Like this happened to me with an Excel thing when I was working at the tech startup and I was so embarrassed to keep going back to my friend and being like, I'm so sorry, can you show me one more time like how to make this spreadsheet line up this way? And so if we had had a Loom, I wouldn't have had to go back and bother her about that. So all Loom videos also back up to their cloud. I do currently use the paid version of Loom because of how much video I've been creating, but you can absolutely do a ton with the free version as well, but I do recommend downloading any videos that you want to save or turn into content later just so that you have a backup somewhere. You're going to love this next tool if you create any YouTube content or if you have a podcast because it's called Otter AI and it is 
currently the most affordable and most accurate transcription software that I have been able to find as an influencer. I actually first started using Otter AI when I was still doing freelance writing for magazines because I would often have to interview people and then come back and transcribe those interviews. And I do not miss the days of manually transcribing interviews. I used to do it as an intern all the time. And especially if it was me who did the interview, listening to the sound of your own voice and going through and making those edits is just not my favorite thing. And I love Otter AI because you can upload any kind of audio file, MP4, MOV, et cetera, et cetera. It will auto transcribe your piece of content. And then from there, you can go in and make any edits that you want. So I always review my transcriptions before I export them. It is the biggest time saver in the world. And and again, this is really helpful if you create long form YouTube content, because I know for me, YouTube's auto transcription is okay, but I actually do prefer to transcribe it through Otter AI and then replace that text because Otter AI does capitalization. It does punctuation. I just feel like it feels more like you're reading a book in a sense, especially if you do watch videos with the captions on. So I do like taking the extra time to do that. And I also find that it's more accurate in terms of spelling. I've talked about this before, but sometimes YouTube will auto transcribe TikTok, like T-I-C-K-T-O-C-K, -C -C -C, when I'm talking about not the clocks, I'm talking about the app, and it just really streamlines that whole process. Another way you can use Otter AI is if you are a podcaster, you can use Otter AI to create a transcript of your podcast. And from there, you may choose to publish a transcript on your website or pull pieces of your transcription to make a blog post, especially if you had a guest on and it's like five tips to help your living with X guest name. It just saves you from having to go in and listen listen to that entire episode to pull out those key clips. You will already have the text version of your podcast ready to go and ready to iterate on. And one other way that I sometimes use Otter AI is every once in a while, I, I really am a writer at heart, but sometimes I find it easier to brainstorm by talking out loud. So sometimes if I'm talking out loud or just thinking about how I might be putting together a script, especially for like a short form piece of content, sometimes I find it easier to speak what I wanna say and then go back and refine it slightly and Otter AI will listen and transcribe as you're talking so that you can have this piece of content that you can go back and edit and refine. And sometimes that's just a little bit of an easier process for me than sitting and trying to write a script from nothing. So depending on how often you use it, you might get away with using the free version and you'll have a certain number of minutes that reset each month. If you use it as much as I do, you might consider upgrading to paid and it's pretty affordable overall month to month. So just something to think about. Okay. And let's get into the content distribution and scheduling portion of the video. And the next app that I want to talk to you about is Pinterest. Now, Pinterest obviously is not just an editing app, but a social media platform and a search engine. So God, Pinterest just loves wearing all the hats, doesn't it? If you are not really big on Pinterest, as I know that it is not as popular amongst influencers as Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube maybe. So if you're not as familiar with Pinterest, the big thing that I would suggest using it for is essentially to think about it almost like a content sprinkler. And I call Pinterest a content sprinkler because what you can do is take any of your existing content from Instagram, from TikTok, from any of these other places, create a pin of the content, which may be the content itself if you're just repurposing the same video that you shared to TikTok, or it could be a little pin graphic where you're promoting a blog post or YouTube video or some other piece of content you've created and just upload all of that to Pinterest and let it distribute your content throughout its algorithm. It's really just such a simple way to guarantee extra sets of eyes on your content and scheduling something to Pinterest takes like less than a minute. I promise it's not a cumbersome or crazy process and it's really straightforward. One thing to add is obviously if you're repurposing something from TikTok or from from Instagram, just make sure that the copyright sounds are off and that there are no watermarks. And this is kind of another case 
going back to when we were talking about CapCut to edit in one editing platform and then take that piece of content and share it to all of your different platforms. Because once you're in TikTok, you can add an audio to it that you might not add on Pinterest. So just something to think about, kind of having a clean version of your video, so to speak, that maybe just has a title and a caption so that then you can not have to worry about the audio and not have to worry about watermarks when you're sharing to other platforms too. And this is another way that I use Canva in my business is usually for every YouTube video and blog post I create, I will also create two little graphic images in Canva that I will share as Pinterest pins to drive more people back to that long form content. This can be as simple as taking the title of the YouTube video, putting it against a colorful background and uploading it to Pinterest. Or maybe you want to take the same still image that you use in a YouTube thumbnail or that you used in your blog post, pin it to Pinterest and make sure that it links back to either that YouTube video or that blog post. So if you're not fully deep into the Pinterest world, this is definitely a way to consider using it that will hopefully get your content in front of some new people. If you want more Pinterest specific tips, I have a bunch of videos about Pinterest, so I'll leave a link to a few down below in the description box. And the next app that I want to talk to you about is LTK. So as you may already know, LTK is a shoppable affiliate platform where you can upload your photo or video content. You can actually tag affiliate products in it and earn commission if someone ends up shopping through your links. Now, originally when LTK first started, it was just a Google Chrome extension where you could create an affiliate link as long as the website you were on was a retailer registered with LTK. So at first it was all about just grabbing an individual link. So if I posted an outfit and someone said, hey, Austin, where's your top from? I could send them that affiliate link and say, oh, thanks so much. It's from this place. Here is an affiliate link if you're interested in buying it. LTK has really evolved over the years and now its app actually attracts so many shoppers to it throughout the day. And within their app, you can create and share obviously classic photo and video posts. And a lot of people also create collages on the app of their favorite products of roundups. So this is a great way to curate products for specific occasions like Mother's Day gifts or little black dresses to wear to a cocktail party that maybe you're not going out and actually buying all of those individual items, but you can select pieces from websites that you love, from brands that you like, and create these kind of curated shopping collections. It really is almost like being a fashion magazine shopping editor and putting together these little flat lays to give people inspiration from brands, again, that you love and trust. So if you're wondering what content to post on LTK, they actually send out weekly emails to their creators, which I find incredibly helpful. They'll let you know what is trending on the app that week. So right now, end of April, it could be things like spring dresses. There's a lot of wedding season stuff, a lot of baby shower stuff, nursery stuff. So there are just lots of ideas in emails any given week of what type of content you could create that people are actively searching for on the app. This kind of ties into what we were talking about at the beginning of the video with TubeBuddy and Keywords Everywhere about creating searchable content, creating content that people are actively looking for. So there's an increased chance that they'll find yours. And one more thing about LTK, I do strongly suggest that if you have a blog, that whenever you create a blog post, you're also creating one or two graphics for LTK. Again, I do this in Canva, where you're creating those affiliate graphics and then sharing those images to the LTK app. So that again, more eyes are getting on your content and you have a higher chance of making an affiliate sale. I know I just said that was the last thing about LTK, but one more thing I want to add is that within the LTK app, you can actually also tag products that are exact matches or you can tag similar products. So this is great if you're a fashion creator who mainly wears thrifted or vintage pieces. If you do still want to be able to give your audience some options to recreate the look, you can find similar items and it'll show on the app whether an item is an exact match or whether it's just similar to kind of get the look. And this is another great way to tag more items there and potentially increase your affiliate commissions. And the next tool on the content scheduling front that I want to talk about is Later. I have been a Later user for several years now. I want to say since maybe 2018 or 2019. And my love for Later just knows no bounds because the thing I love about scheduling content 
is that it allows you to be consistent without needing to be active. So what do I mean by that? Basically what I mean is usually, for example, like I was talking about scheduling Pinterest content, I actually do that through later and I will schedule Pinterest content pretty much at the top of a new month where I'll set aside an hour or two to go into later, import all of the content I'm going to be sharing to Pinterest that month and simply schedule it in through later so that I'm technically posting on Pinterest every single day, even though like today right now I'm not uploading the content myself. So I currently use Later to schedule content for Pinterest, Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. You can use Later to schedule content to Instagram, but especially for Instagram Reels, I just find it easier when I'm selecting the music and adding those category tags and things like that to do it within the app. So you can certainly schedule it through Later if that works better for you, but Instagram's in-app scheduler has been working fine for me on that front right now. So I've been mainly using Later for those other four platforms. I currently use the paid version of Later, but there's definitely plenty that you can test for free with Later too, so be sure to check the link down below. All of these tools are linked down below in the description box to go check out Later and see what scheduling content can do for your influencer business. If you haven't already, don't forget to download my free guide, The Influencer Launchpad, which is your guide to starting and growing a profitable creator business. There's always a link to that down below in the description box for you. And if you do try the paid versions of any of these apps, remember those might count as business expenses. But if you'd like to learn more about what counts as an expense when you are a content creator or influencer, be sure to check out the up next recommendation on the screen. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.